Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to episode seven. Apologies for the t wait in between episode six and episode seven. Things just got a little bit busy, and I just didn't get around to recording the next video. But now we're here. Last video, we went over file systems and essentially how to create our user accounts. Today, we're going to actually kind of jump in and create ourselves a little GUI, an actual menu here, and we're going to introduce some cool new stuff along the way. First off, let's go ahead and create our little menu. We're going to put this in a loop here because basically we want them to be in this menu until they make a decision. This is going to be a very basic, just kind of print out your options and you type one, two, or three to select your option. Depending on which option you select, we will go ahead and do a function. So let's, uh, as usual, clear the screen and just set our position top left corner for now. Now we got to kind of make our menu. So let's just do like a, one of these bad Larry's here, account system. And then we'll just go ahead and go to the next line and option one. Let's say this will be login. Go to option two. This will be register. Option three, quit. Let's go with that. We need an area for the user to actually type in their option. And we're going to put it down in the next line with a slash N here, a backslash N. What this does is it adds a line break, kind of like what print does. And select an option. Add a space at the end for making it look nice. Now we need to actually do our uh, read. So we're gonna do, uh, let's do choice equals read. And we need to make some logic to kind of take what our user types and then make it a function. So let's say if choice equals one, then uh, this will be our login function. Then we need to put in a cool little else if. So else if choice equals two, then this is going to be our register function. And if choice equals three, then we need to exit out of the loop. And hopefully you remember it is break. And then let's put in an else at the very end. So basically if none of the others are true, then clearly the user typed something wrong and we're going to let them know invalid choice. We'll sleep for two seconds and that's it. Go ahead and end that off. So let's see what this looks like. We'll go ahead and run menu. Look at that. We got ourselves a little, little account system. We enter nothing invalid choice and we start over. Let's actually build out these functions. Last time I separated into a different program here, but you know what? We're just going to delete that delete this program, remove login, and that's gone. Instead, we're gonna run all of this in our one program through the use of functions. So I'm gonna call this uh, register. And a function, just like most other things, will need an end. And while we're at it, we should create a function for our menu here. So let's do function menu. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and tab everything out, make sh it all look nice. There we go. Tab, throw another end, and there we go. Now everything is in menu. And, and what does this mean? What does that do for us? So let's just go ahead and run menu. And you'll notice, uh-oh, nothing happened. What, what's up with that? Well, that's because this right here defines the function. Now we need to actually call the function to do what to actually uh, activate so we do that just by typing menu or whatever this function name is and you need your uh, parentheses here that's where your arguments would go if it had any otherwise it's just blank so if we run it again now it's working just like it was if we do three we're back into our terminal just because of this uh, break here on line 22 so very cool for choice two, we can just put in register. And it will, once we put in two, it will take this and put us into here. Now it is very important, the thing that you must keep in mind, 
is that the register must be defined before it is called. So if you try and run register somewhere way up here, uh, it is not going to work because at this point in the code, uh, register doesn't exist. So it's you always got to make sure you call or declare the function before you call upon it. That is good practice. Let's uh, register our count. Term.clear, term.set cursor position. Okay, so let's uh, tell them to enter a username. We'll go ahead and do our user equals read. Like before, we're going to kind of do the same logic we did in the last video with login and all of that. We're going to first check that the user is not taken. And if you remember, the file we created was the username.txt. So we can check if that exists with fs.exists and then user, as in what the user is typing, concatenate.txt. So if it does exist, we got to let them know, hey, we can't do that. That account already exists. And we'll sleep for two seconds and return. If it doesn't already exist, then we will just carry on. We'll have them enter their password. We'll go ahead and do the same thing. Pass equals read. We're going to mask what they're typing. And now we need to do the FS. You know what? Let's make a function that will do this. We're going to get into the habit of making functions. So let's make a function for saving account information. I'll just call it save account. Now there's something really cool we can do with functions. Like I mentioned, we can put in arguments. Now, what does that mean? Well, basically, we can put in some variables such as user and then pass. Now, what happens here is we can go ahead and do our file equals fs.open user. Oops, it's a variable. So user concatenate.txt. And then we will open it in write mode. Remember, there's three modes, read, write, and append. File.write, pass, file.close. And that's it. Let's run through what this will do. We need to actually call upon this function here before I can explain it. We will just run save account, user, pass, and then print account created successfully because at this point they will have already ran through this function so the account details will have been saved and we'll sleep for a couple seconds let's run through this we enter a username store it in read we make sure that the file doesn't already exist user.txt we enter a password store it in pass now we run this uh, function save account and we take the username and the password that the user typed and we pass it on into this function to be used. Right here, we are using the user variable that we've established already to enter, to create a file in write mode. We write the pass, aka the pass that we read, and then we close the file. So let's go ahead and test this out. Menu, let's register. So let's do Alex. My password will be tomato. Account created successfully. So let's go ahead and terminate. And if I do an ls, you'll see an alex.txt. Let's edit alex.txt and you see my password, tomato. So that's pretty cool. We can, uh, you can see how powerful functions are. And there's really uh, limitless possibilities with this here. We have ourselves a save account function. Just, just to be clean, just to get used to using functions. Was it required? Not really. We could have just stuck... Uh, these three lines like underneath here just fine but uh you know it, it's just a learning experience we need to make a login function function log in and let's put an end i'm always gonna put the end right when i call it just to be safe and down here let's just run login okay so same deal term dot clear Set cursor position one dot comma one, and let's have them enter their username. It's gonna be user equals read write password pass equals read mask it of course can never forget to do that. Uh, you know what? We made a function for save accounts. 
let's create a function for loading accounts. So function load account. And this one, we're just gonna put in user because for this, we're gonna need to enter the, the file, open the file, and it's gonna be named user or whatever we type here. So we're gonna pass this variable into this function. First, we need to check if the file exists, just like we did for register. Instead, I'm gonna do the opposite and check if it doesn't exist. So if not fs.exists user, and we're gonna do read mode, because, or what am I doing? We're not gonna do read mode, that would be wrong. <laughs> so if not fs.exists, then we will return nil. And what does that mean? Return nil basically just means, uh, well, we're going to check for, for this in our login function. So it'll make sense. Just bear with me. Otherwise, uh, once we get through that, we're going to just go ahead and do file equals fs.open. It's going to be user concatenate.text. Now we're going to do the read mode. Got ahead of myself earlier. Now we're gonna do password equals file.readall because that's all that's in the file. So it's okay if we read the whole thing. Now we'll close it and return password. So what, what's with these returns? Why, why are we using these? Well, we're gonna make a variable here. So let's say stored password equals load account user. Let's just show you. I'm going to print stored password just so you can see like what it outputs. We'll run this. Login Alex Tomato. Uh-oh. Let's uh let's sleep. 3 seconds. All right. Let's try that again. 1 Alex Tomato Tomato. It just prints out my password. Now if we uh do one that doesn't exist, so uh bill uh, it returns nil. As you can see, that's what it prints out. So that's what these uh, returns mean. And you'll it's stored in stored password. So we can actually uh, set a variable equal to a function because this a function essentially becomes whatever it returns here. That's what it's going to give us. Uh, by default, functions typically like return true if it ran successfully. We'll, we'll play around with that some more as we go. We printed, or let's get rid of this. That's just for some debugging, I guess. So let's check if stored password equals nil. So if stored password equals nil, then we're gonna let them know that that account doesn't exist. Otherwise, uh, if it does exist, then they're gonna go ahead and log in. And we, of course, need to compare stored password. Let me move that cursor out of the way. Stored password equals pass, then print login successful. And we'll give them a little welcome. We'll sleep so that they can see it. Term dot. I'm going to clear the screen, set the cursor position back in one comma one, just to kind of reset the terminal. And then we'll do an else. So if the password is incorrect, then we're going to tell them incorrect password. And that's it. We'll go ahead and run it. One, Alex Tomato. Login successful. There we go. And you'll notice, uh-oh, we're back in our menu. That's kind of weird, right? Um, well, let's go ahead and test out if we put in... The wrong user, nothing, I guess, because uh, we need to do a sleep here and a sleep here. User does not exist, okay? Let's uh, do wrong password, incorrect password. Cool. Everything is good. Let's register. What happens if I enter nothing? Uh-oh, okay, so it still creates an account. Well, it didn't create a user, that's for sure. So that's something we could do is make it so that if you uh, enter nothing, then it shouldn't do it because I'd be a little weird. Edit T. Yeah, that's just blank. So if we log in with T, then that's it. Just no password. <laughs> so I don't know. You might not want that. We can, of course, check for that. 
anyway, let's uh, let's press on. This is pretty much the whole program. Uh, all we need to do is make it to where when we log in successfully, uh, we exit this loop. And we can do that by adding in a break here. How are we going to do that? So if the login is true, all right, what we'll do is this. We will just, uh, at the end of this, when it's done with the if-thens and all that, um, I have a bunch of sleeps, so let's just put a sleep down here and just throw these out just to be more efficient. I'm going to need this here because I'm uh, clearing the screen at this point. Uh, and then we will just do a return false. And now down here, right, when we call login, I'm going to instead make this an if. So if login, then break. So what does that mean? Well, it's still going to run login because it, uh, it needs something to compare to. And this is just saying if true, if login, then break. If I did if not login, that would be asking if login returns false. So we need uh, we need to return true here after we log in. So let's just uh, uh, throw throw that at the end of here. So Alex Tomato, login successful. Welcome. There we go. Now we're back in our terminal. Isn't that neat? And we can check for, do some input validation here. We want to make sure that it's not an empty password. Maybe we want it to be, I don't know, like at least five characters. So we can do uh, if, so there's a, a fun little symbol here is hashtag pass. Now that means the length of the pass, the length of this variable. It's going to basically be if the length of pass is less than five then we can tell them password must be more than five or must be at least five characters let's put an or here in case password is nothing or pass Actually, maybe we should do it the other way around. Check that there's something there first. So if pass equals nil or hashtag pass is less than five, then that'll work. Okay. Print, let them know it needs to be at least five characters. Else we will run this. And uh, we do need to do the same for the username. Um, if pass equals nil or the length of pass is less than five or user equals nil or the length of user is less than three then we'll just print both username must be at least three characters okay and we'll sleep for three seconds let's test that Let's register. Nothing. Account already exists. Okay. Well, I did already try that. <laughs> so, A. Nothing. Okay. That's good. Let's uh, make it at least three characters. Maybe password is one. Didn't work. Cool. Let's do it again. So, Bill. And then we'll make it five characters. One, two, three, four, five. Great. So there you go. Some little basic input validation to make sure that it's not just nothing. You can have limit or a minimum amount, minimum length of each. You can of course split these up so you're not just printing this out at the same time. I just did it for like a real quick solution so that the video doesn't drag on longer. Uh, but that is how you would validate that uh, those are those meet the requirements you set. Uh, with that, we made a lot of progress. We have ourselves an actual GUI of sorts here, and we have a functioning register and login system. So I hope you enjoyed. Next video will come up very, sh very shortly, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.